Batista's a better actor. The Rock may have been in Ooh, more projects, okay. but Dave Batista's a better All actor. Right. What about John Cena? Hello and welcome to another edition of Popcorn Bucket List. We have got a lot of stuff to cover in this episode. I knew this was going to happen. It was going to be a big episode to begin with. We had we were going to reintroduce our, our crossover with the library here, and I just knew they were going to drop this news today. <laughs> I'm not going to wait till next week to talk about it because I've been it. waiting a month to talk At about least. this. James Gunn has officially announced the first half or just chapter one. I don't know. They've released yeah, some of their some DC of plans here. They said they would do it by the end of January. They did a January 31st. So, yes, technically they did end up doing it at the end of January. Yes, they did. But they did it in the same way that I do a college paper at the very end, <laughs> procrastinate till the last day yep. on the due date. And it's just good enough to, to, to pass. Yeah, yep. It was him talking into a camera with a couple of stills. Yeah. And then I'll zoom in on the still. Oh, pan left to right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay, yeah. buddy. I hope, I hope you guys really. Yeah. You know, Marvel, We they bring out a whole coliseum of people and do yeah. a whole show of their lineup. Yeah. DC, all we can best we can do is James Gunn comes and talks on Twitter for six minutes. Yeah. That's all we got. Yeah. That's the best we can do, people. But we're going to talk about it here because I have to talk about it. I'm a DC fan. Yep. I've been waiting for this for too long now. And uh, yeah, let's just let's just go over what was announced and just I, I got my thoughts on it. I'm curious your thoughts on it. Ten projects have been announced to be a part of this new DCU DC yep. universe. There are some other projects that are kind of around it, maybe connected to it. We'll get into those later. But let's talk about the 10 projects James Gunn talked about. To kick things off, one of the first things to come out, Creature Commandos. This will be an animated show, yep. but it will be connected to this universe. Interesting choice on opening it, starting it with an animated show. That's what I thought when I first saw that. And I looked at the, it's like, I have no idea who any of these people are. This this is, a. I even had to look these guys up a little bit too. They're kind of like, so in the comics, they were basically like, if you took the Suicide Squad and put them in World War II. Okay. So like before even Amanda Waller kind of did it. However, it's looking like this is going to kind of be a new, like a Suicide Squad TV show that is connected to present day and everything yep. probably. Um, which carries into the next project, Waller, a live-action TV series. Still haven't gotten to a movie yet. Yep. This is supposed to take place. This is basically Peacemaker Season 1.5. Yep. That's a lot of this of is going to be Peacemaker 1.5, really. Yep. Um, and I think they are doing this because they want to kind of introduce superhumans into this universe. And much like how Iron Man and the Marvel was kind of like, well, Nick Fury is the one kind of playing chess, gathering all these people. Amanda Waller is kind of like that in the DC universe. Only she's a little bit more, I don't want to say evil about it. More <laughs> malicious. Anti, more anti-hero about yeah. it. Basically, Amanda Waller is Nick Fury, but she creates her own Avengers because the Justice League exists. Yep. She likes the Justice League. She likes what they stand for. She hates the fact that they're not in her control, though. Yep. And so she creates her own superhero team, essentially. So Waller, Viola Davis confirmed to come back. One of the only casting announcements we got out of this, and I'm okay with this because I think yeah. she's been really good as Amanda Waller yep. in these past few projects. But then 2025, we got to wait two years. And Long I'm, time. I said, I said, we got to be patient. Yep. We got to be pa I'm willing to wait the two years. If they want to get it right, I'm willing to wait the two years. I can I can kill time in two years. <laughs> I, I'll figure something else to do. Superman Legacy. This is one of the only things we knew going into this announcement that was going to happen. It is not a Superman origin story, but a young Superman. The way I've heard it described, it's kind of like Smallville the movie, but he's kind of starting being Superman and everything. Yeah. And kind of like... How, again, we're just going to keep comparing it to Marvel here because it's the best comparison. Marvel started with Iron Man as kind of like this. They're kind of going to be our big hero here for a little while. Yep. Here we got Superman. He's going to be the big hero here for a while. It kind of makes sense to start off this universe. And in fairness, they kind of did try that with Man of Steel. 
Like, we weren't sure what this universe was going to be. I don't know if Snyder knew how far he was going to go with it, but that was kind of what Man of Steel was. It was supposed to be the kickoff of this new DC universe. Yep. So we're kind of trying it again. <laughs> Another go around. Take two, people. Yeah. Take two. Let's Another do it. And then we move into one of my favorite announcements, actually, Lanterns, a live-action TV series. I said a long time ago, you want to expand this universe? You want to really introduce people to the interdiment the space travel all that stuff yep that is the dc universe you bring in the lanterns and the way he kind of described it is he was like it's kind of like true detective but green lanterns yeah and i loved true detective and i i love that concept for this yeah i think that's going to be really interesting and really cool but also a fair bit dark and Mm -hmm. i like that i enjoy that a lot Mm -hmm. yeah i just i really hope they get the casting down right for that and then that will really I think that will be such a huge part of this universe. Yep. And that's probably one of the ones that I'm most excited about yep. when they made this announcement. But then we move into our next movie, The Authority. Uh, basically, this is a bunch of antiheroes who form a team and try to fix the world their way. So here's my theory. Because, again, this is another one of those lesser-known ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, I even had to look these guys up a little bit, too. When you look at the lineup so far, we've had... C- bunch of TV series, and then we had Superman movie, and then this is the next movie. Not everyone's going to watch these TV series and everything, so the movies are more important. I think this is going to be a movie because they want to introduce Superman, and then they want to introduce the idea to Superman about a superhero team. Yep. And I think that's why they're also kind of doing all the Amanda Waller stuff too. But they need a movie to get it to all the mainstream audiences. Same thing over at Marvel. Like, as much as we've seen the TV series and as much as we know going into Ant-Man, this new Mm Ant-Man, so much of it is going to have to be reestablished because not everybody watches the TV series. Not everybody watched Loki. Not everybody watched this. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. 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 So a lot of it's going to have to be kind of either rehashed or told in a different way. I think that's where the authority is going to come into here. It's going to introduce to Superman the idea of what a superhuman team can do, but let's do it not as evil as these guys are or as evil as the suicide squad is like let's do a a team that's for justice and protecting the world and saving people and i got i almost got the boys kind of vibes Mm -hmm. out of it because he said it's coming to hbo um it's a team that wants to see it in their way and all i was thinking was the last hbo great superhero series i watched was the boys and i loved the boys that and, was on Amazon Prime. Oh, yeah. So, sorry. Excuse me. Let's cut that. <laughs> I'm a dingleberry. Um, but, yeah, I just got the boys' vibes from it, and I can't wait. I think that'll be I think that'll be cool. As long as it is, like, really, like, that kind of not darker but more, like, mischievous, I don't care, I'm a superhero, I'm going to yeah. make the world I don't, I don't think way. they're going to go as violent as the yeah, boys because you, be you can't violent. do the R rating thing. Yeah. I mean, you can, but studios are too hesitant to do yeah. that. Unless right you're, uh, Unless you're Deadpool. Or Hugh Jackman. Or Hugh Jackman. Yeah. Well, even then, it took him a while to it finally did. get that R rating. It did. But, yeah, I, I think you're right. I think it is going to be kind of like the boys, but more PG-13-ish. Yep. How good or bad that will be, we'll have to wait and see. But then the next announcement was another TV series, Paradise Lost. Now, James Gunn called it, quote, a Wonder Woman prequel series in the style of Game of Thrones. This is going to give the origin of her home island, Themyscira. We're going to kind of see how the Amazons came to be and everything. There's no word about how much of this is going to tie into Wonder Woman. In fact, we haven't really officially gotten confirmation Gal Gadot is sticking around. As of right now, I'm going to assume she is because I think she wants to. Mm -hmm. But there hasn't been any announcement about a Wonder Woman 3 or any future projects with her. So I would not go into this expecting a Gal Gadot cameo. Maybe in a flash forward end credit thing at the end of the series. Maybe. Like, maybe. Yeah. But don't go into this hoping for Wonder Woman. Yep, I agree. I agree. And then moving on to the next announcement, another one that made uh, a lot of waves, I think, The Brave and the Bold. This is a movie, and it's going to bring, sort of reintroduce us to Batman. Yes. What Batman are we going to see in this universe? Don't know. Who's gonna father Batman. It? It's going to be a fatherly Batman. Now, this is an interesting choice. Because I think a lot of people want to see a good Batman and Robin team up. This Mm -hmm. is going to be a Batman and Robin movie. But he's skipping all the way to Damian Wayne. Yep. For those of you out there who don't know, 
Batman has a kid with Talia al Ghul named Damian Wayne. He's raised in the League of Assassins, and then he becomes Robin, and it becomes the biggest challenge for Batman as far as the Robins go because this is the first Robin who wants to kill, and he has to like kind of hold him back and stop him from doing that. It's a classic father-son movie. You know, yep. the rebellious teenager, only this rebellious teenager knows how to use katanas and jump off rooftops and <laughs> be a vigilante and all that. But classic, classic rebellious classic. teenager <laughs> story. So I think we're going to use this to establish where Batman is in this line of work in this universe. I think we're going to establish the other Robins. Um, I hope to get a Nightwing cameo yep. in this. Um, the question is, who's going to play him? Don't know. We know it's not going to be Ben Affleck. Although, it, he, they did say James Gunn wants him to direct a project in this lineup, and Ben Affleck wants to direct something too. So I'm curious if this is going to be that project. Because yeah, he be, wanted to direct a Batman thing. Yeah. And I would like him to do this. I do too. I think he could tell a good father-son story. I think he would be, mm -hmm. I think he'd be good with yeah. that. So we'll have to see. Uh, here's a wild out there theory. Okay. Michael Keaton. He's played Batman. Ooh. He's in this flash movie. True. We'll talk a little bit about the flash later on too. Could he just stick around and play this new version and be like, he's the older grizzled Batman. Yeah. I got to deal with this son thing. And he's a fantastic actor. Tremendous so actor. I think that would be, he stayed think, in shape. I, yeah. I don't think he'd be able to do a bunch of fighting, but yeah, enough yeah. where we could like get a stunt double in yeah, and help yeah. him out or whatever. Yeah. Just, I don't know. I want to see Keaton in the universe a little bit more. Just say, any more Michael Keaton we get, I'm a happy with. I'm a happy guy. <laughs> hey, we talk a lot about movies on this channel, but sometimes the ones we talk about aren't the most accessible. That's where the Marshall Lyon County Library comes in handy. They have a great collection of physical media, as well as a couple of online services with many, many options for movies, TV shows, and documentaries. It's easy. Just get your own library card at the Marshall Lyon County Library and gain access to their large variety of movies, TV shows, and of course, books. Also, be sure to check back every month as we here at Popcorn Bucket List make specific movie recommendations based on a monthly theme. This month, we're focusing on actors with a personal connection to Minnesota. So head on over to the Marshall Lyon County Library for some of our favorites and check out the channel to get even more movie recommendations. And now, on with the show! But let's move into the other project, Booster Gold, another TV series. Booster Gold's an interesting character. I'll, I'm just going to say that. He essentially, he exists in the future, mm -hmm. way in the future of the DC Universe. He's kind of lame. He wants to be a celebrity. And here's where I think this is really going to be relevant to today's age. He wants to be famous, and he kind of takes the easy way out, like some people I feel like on the internet kind of do. Yep. Oh, I'm just doing the latest TikTok trend. Boom, I'm famous. I didn't really do any work about it. Boom, I'm famous. Yeah, I did it. I made my commentary. I said my things. Come at me. I don't care. <laughs> Anyways, so he steals a bunch of technology from a museum that he works at that includes time travel, stuff like that. And he time yep. travels back in time. And using this technology, he becomes a superhero of the modern age and everything. And yep. he does kind of get his wish of being a celebrity and everything, but he finds that it's a lot harder to be a superhero, especially in this golden age of superheroes yeah. that he t time travels back to and everything. Yep. So I'm a sucker for time travel. Um, I think Booster Gold is an interesting character, so uh, I'm kind of looking yeah, forward to that it, one too. I'm excited to see who they're going to have play that. Like where I, like the kind of the person um, that I actually envision playing him is the guy that's playing um, in the Marvel Universe, and he was in RV or Road Trip or whatever. Uh, not Black Adam, but uh, Atomic Adam or... Adam Smasher? Nope. He's the, wait, you guys are getting paid for this? That guy. Oh, he's not in Black Adam. No, what, he's in. He's in Guardians 3. Yeah, what's his name? Uh, I don't know his real name, but he's playing like Adam Warlock. Adam Warlock. That's what I knew it was Adam something. Yeah, I can't remember what his actual name is. But like, but, okay, so my, no, I, I see what you mean. I mean, I, I see a guy like that where he's the kind of, ooh, 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 and then he goes back in time and, whoa, ah, tick tock. <laughs> like that's what that's what I see, and I I like a, an actor like him is the guy that I'd I I could see that I could see that yeah, but, 
working with James Gunn with Guardians yep. Three. So they have kind of said though he we're not sure how many actors are going to kind of cross over with him in yep. the DC because he so. did there there are rumored to be a few that are coming whether or not they're big characters or you know maybe. Thor gonna play a Green Lantern? You never. Chris know. Hemsworth is not playing I'm Green Lantern. Saying, He's not gonna. You've been trying <laughs> to push that on me ever since you read that crappy rumored article <laughs> that was clickbait years ago. Chris Hemsworth. You never mark know. my words. Mark my. If I am wrong, I will make a statement on this show. Chris Hemsworth is not, will not ever play Green <laughs> Lantern. Mark my words. All right. All right. Uh, also coming out uh, in their new DC slate, Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. This is another movie dealing with another Kryptonian. Now, this one I also find kind of interesting because this is based, James Gunn said it was based off of a comic book that came out basically just last year. Mm-hmm. So a very recent story, and it's a more darker take on Supergirl, which I do find interesting because we've... I'm very used to the CW Supergirl right now, which was kind of a lighter tone and I thought was a pretty accurate portrayal of the character. I am curious to see what a darker tone of this would be, especially considering when you think of who was the last uh, movie adaptation of Supergirl we had, that 80s thing where she fought witches (laughs) and it was silly stupid and she goes to college even though she was like on the clock, her home was going to (laughs) die. Watch that movie if you have a chance. It's one of the craziest things I've ever seen, and it's so bad. But uh, So the bar is set very low as far as a thematic Supergirl. So I think this one's going to be pretty good. Okay. All right. And then rounding out the final announcement they made as far as their DCU lineup, Swamp Thing. This is a movie. Basically, he's a character that even though he's like this sort of plant monster, <clears throat> He's very involved in the magic part of DC Comics. Mm -hmm. And um, this whole chapter one they're calling is like gods and monsters. And he is also kind of part of the monsters, like part of DC Comics as well. And the way they're kind of talking about this being like a scarier sort of horror movie thing, I'm picturing Doctor Strange 2. Yeah. With the yeah, that that's kind of the same vibe I got. Also, looking at the picture, it reminded me of like Creature from the Black Lagoon. I think that's kind of what that's based on. Yeah, like they were taking reference when they were writing that comic originally. And I think that looks awesome. Like a, and it's gonna like you said introduce the mystical elements into the. And that was exactly the same way they did with Doctor Strange. I remember at first. I've said this before. I thought Doctor Strange was going to bomb. I thought it was going to be terrible watching it. Oh, they're doing magic and all. And then I would say I was wrong. I really enjoyed it and kind of opened up my eyes to that whole view. And I, that's exactly what they're doing here. Speaking of like monsters and like Creature from Black Lagoon, that's kind of what Swamp Thing is about. He's kind of like this Frankenstein esque character where it's kind of a tragic character. He's this monster. And, yeah, he's usually kind of for the side for good, but he doesn't really trust humanity yep. because he looks like the hideous monster, yep. so humanity doesn't like him kind of thing. So this could be one of their more ambitious projects, I yep. think. And I think uh, was which one was they said was going to be more of like Game of Thrones? That was the uh, Paradise Lost one, Paradise uh, Lost. Wonder Woman like prequel. See, and also with a lot of these, I thought that they were doing a great job of maybe finding characters that are more gray than they are all good or all bad, um, which I think is very... And you've heard it multiple times with shows and movies. Like, characters that are gray are a lot uh, more compelling and interesting to watch than somebody that's all right or all good or all bad. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it's, I think they're doing a great job finding characters that are that way. So, just to recap, five movies, five TV shows. One of those TV shows animated, by the yep. way. Um, so as far as the mainstream audiences go, I, I guess you're really going to have to only focus on those five movies. Yep. The diehard fans like us, like these are probably going to come out on HBO Max or something like that. Yep. They're not going to be as accessible. Yep. So we'll keep an eye on those. But uh, five movies do to th- restart the universe. Do you think that has something to do with cost analysis and stuff too, like making a TV show compared to a movie? This day and age, though, TV shows are so cinematic in themselves that I, I don't get. 
I don't do you just, know. Do you just get more of a story out of a? I, I think a it TV might be show? more of a story thing. Yeah, because yeah. that was interesting to me. And the, they said what ten years? This was a ten year plan, roughly. T- well, okay, ten years, I guess, including I think these two years as they're like getting some of these projects ready. Yeah, because he did say that. Uh, oh, I th- we're going to talk about the Flash and some of those other projects that are already that are coming out that are still linked into all of this. Yeah, so so let's talk about them. There's, there's like other movies that are coming out here from now to 2025, which is yep. kind of when they're going to kickstart this version of the DCU. Um, he, he James Gunn, during this announcement, he referenced these. And I found it was interesting. A couple of them, so like Shazam 2 in particular, maybe this is just me kind of reading into it, but the way he like kind of mentions Shazam 2, it kind of sounded like almost like a mobster, like, Hey man, he's not he's not interfering with our business, so we'll just leave him be. Yep. Like he was kind of like Shazam 2, it's gonna come out. Shazam's kind of been on his own thing, so we're just gonna kind of let it be. It's like, okay, so it's almost like him like sending a warning shot to all the other projects. You don't interfere with us, yeah, and we let you come out now. Yep. yep. Just like he said with the Batman and the Joker. That's fine, but it will be clearly marked. Yes. You are not a part of yes. the DCU. Yes. <laughs> he 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 mentioned they're going to be a part of DC Elseworlds. Yep. And this is a thing in DC Comics. Like, if there's ever, like, an alternate universe or, like, uh, it's kind of like their version of what if, yep. almost. But, they're, they're yeah, he very clearly said, like, we're going to clearly mark it. So that way, if somebody comes and watches Batman 2, they know it's not going to be a part yep. of this Batman and Robin thing. They're going to watch Joker. It's not a part of any of this yeah. it's just its own thing we're gonna let them do their own thing i hope they as long put, as they don't interfere with our business yeah i hope they put like a tool a cool a cool title card in the beginning oh they're gonna and it's gonna say somewhere else in the <laughs> universe or Elseworlds, something like yeah, that yeah something like that um so yeah shazam 2 is still coming out this year um aquaman 2 he said is planning on being released not really sure how connected these are going to be in the yep. future projects however um he also mentions blue beetle i think i forgot to write that down yep he, he mentions he really likes that character. Again, I really hope they do carry on with him throughout these because I think he's a really fascinating character too. Yeah. He, he's kind of Spider-Man-esque and not just because they're both superheroes based on bugs. <laughs> it's just a weird coincidence. But the more interesting one here is The Flash. Yes, 100%. We've talked about The Flash a lot on this show because of the Ezra Miller controversy. I've heard rumors People are talking about this is such a if you if you remove all the controversy, let's for a moment here, let's forget about the fact that Ezra Miller has been convicted for stalking and kidnapping and also assault and I think burglary at one point. Let's forget about all that for just (laughs) one minute here. Reportedly, this is a fantastic movie. Even James Gunn has raved about this movie. He says this movie is great. They're going to use this movie as sort of like a the official restart. Flash is going to mess with some timelines here, and that's going to kind of reverberate and be like, all right, everything that happened before this doesn't really count. Everything that happens now is what we're yeah. what we're counting here. So there's also talk, is Ezra Miller going to stick around? Don't know. He's got a couple years to be in therapy and all that. And Turn his life around. Yes. And look, I have been hard on Ezra Miller in the past. I think rightfully so. Yep. Because he was running away from the law and doing other crimes. But if he does in these next few years turn his life around, go to therapy, do his time, pay for his crimes, I'd be willing to forgive him. Why? Robert Downey Jr. got arrested on drug charges yep. multiple times. Yep, RDJ, same thing. He turned his life around, people, and he was given this second opportunity. Yep, people make mistakes, even celebrities. Yes, especially and, celebrities. Yep, and sometimes they get off the hook easier than others. Yep. Not all the time, but sometimes. Talking to you, Alec Baldwin. Oh, my. That's how busy this week is. We, yeah. we don't have time to talk yeah. about that, but yeah. <laughs> that's a whole other thing. Yeah. It was a big movie news week this week. It was. It was. Um, But... If he falls off the wagon again, I don't know if I can forgive him again. Yep. It's kind of, it's for me personally, it's like you got one more chance, bro. Because I want to see him as this character. He was one of the only good things in Justice League. I'm going to be honest. Even And even that was kind of, eh, yeah. all right. So, big, uh, it's a big time period for DC fans. Big transition yep. period. 
we'll have to see how these next few years go. And that's kind of the worst part is I said we have to be patient. At the same time, I don't want to be patient. Yep, we got to wait. We got to be patient, though. All right, so that's uh, that was a lot to take in here. And like I said, we still got a big episode here. The, the big thing we wanted to talk about is our continuing partnership here with the Marshall Lyon County Library. Every month, we introduce a new theme, and we give our own recommendations. If you're in the area here, you can go ahead and check them out, check out our display. This month, we're talking about actors with a connection to Minnesota, mainly because at the end of the month here, Isaiah Whitlock Jr., SMSU alum, is in the new movie coming out later this month. Uh, I cannot wait to talk about it. Yes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave you. I'm not gonna say what it is though, because it's a crazy movie, and uh, I want to leave you in suspense on that one. <laughs> or maybe you already know. I don't know. But we wanted to highlight other actors and actresses who have had a connection with Minnesota, and we have come up with eight recommendations. If you want to check them out, check them out at the Marshall Lyon County Library. But we're going to use this segment as our number one recommends here. We're going to give you, we'll let you know the number one one. If you want to know our other ones, go and uh, find the display or check them out on the website as well. I believe they're on there. But uh, I'll start us off here. Here's my number one recommend, The Wizard of Oz. Yes, that's right. It has a connection to Minnesota here. Judy Garland, born in Grand Rapids, Michigan, lived here for a few years, I believe, and then became one of the biggest stars of early Hollywood, starring in one of the greatest movies of all time. Uh, You talk about the technical aspect, obviously one of the first like long-form colored movies Mm -hmm. with actual color. Um, I think the acting all around is great. The set design is great. With a few, like, you know, there's some, like, backgrounds. It's like, okay, you can tell it's clearly <laughs> painted. But, hey, it was like the 19, yeah. it was like 1930s. What, yeah. what do you expect? Um, I'm also a big weather guy. I love tornadoes. <laughs> so, obviously, the tornado scene in the beginning, that's going to draw me in every time, even as a kid. But uh, if you haven't watched it in a while, check it out again. It's a good movie. It's a good piece of cinema history to there look back on. Perfect. Uh, Ryan, what's your uh, number one recommend for this month? So my number one recommend this month is a film probably not a lot of people have heard of. It is a Vince Vaughn masterpiece. The title of the film is called Brawl on Cell Block 99. Um, Vince Vaughn, was he born here? Or he was he just... born in Minneapolis, I believe. Yep, he was born in Minneapolis. So that's a little connection tie in there. Now, cell, uh, Brawl on Cell Block 99 is Vince Vaughn is playing a hardcore bad guy. Gets sent to jail. Um, the jail is kind of run by uh, bad guys, and yeah, it's it's awesome. It's Vince Vaughn. You see him as a more of a a fighter, a a bad guy trying to do good because he's in jail now and he's got a family. Awesome, fantastic film. It's pretty uh, kind of dark, so uh, if you're a kid, watch it with your parents. <laughs> but check it out; it's good. <laughs> Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Let's take a quick moment here and talk about the Marshall Six Theater here in Marshall, Minnesota. As we move into February, more and more blockbusters will be showing up on the marquee. So make sure you check out their website for showtimes and make sure you get there early. So that way you get some good concessions. Also, be on the lookout for more Phantom events to show up here at the Marshall Six Theater. Very exclusive very different every time. So be sure to check out their website for showtimes and more. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. To wrap things up here on this episode, we're going to end with the weekly preview. We kind of did things a little out of order, but we thought the other two things that we are talking about was a little bit more important. It's still kind of... We're transitioning into February, so we're going to get some better films here, but we didn't have a lot to talk about with these guys, but let's talk about them now. February 3rd is the day we're talking about. We got two movies coming out. Could not be more opposite of each other. Uh, 100%. uh, If they tried. First things first, and this is really relevant now, because breaking news this morning, now that I realize, 80 for Brady is the name of the movie. This is coming to theaters starring Lily Tomlin, Jane Fonda, Rita Marino, and Sally Field. For those of you keeping score at home, that is a combined five Oscar wins between the four of them. That's not including all the times they've been nominated as well. These Golden Girls of Hollywood are big fans of Tom Brady. Their characters are. 
and uh, they want to go see him in the Super Bowl because they believe this is going to be his last Super Bowl. For a little bit of a reference here, this is when he was still playing the Patriots. So, yep. no, this would not be his last Super Bowl. However, it's now a little bit more relevant. Yep. Do you think, oh, theory time, here we go, right off the top of my head. With this movie coming out, do you think he announced the retirement to help build anticipation for this movie? Ooh, that's a great point. And do you um, think he unannounces his retirement in a month from now? I So in his retirement, didn't he say he's retiring for real this time? For real this time. And so, if you have to say for real this time, I'm still not trusting you. That's a great point. That's I'm great still point. not trusting you. It could be. Maybe does he have a stake in this movie? Is he, he I think he produced produce it? it. Yeah, he produced oh, it. Jeez, yeah. Well, maybe it was just like I find the timing uh, very interesting. Maybe the movie was done last year, and he said, "No, I'm wait. I'm playing another year." And they held off the movie. Yeah. And then part of the reason he was gone so much earlier in the uh, spring train or you know fall training and all of that was just, hey, we're pushing this back. I think I'm going to retire after this year. Yeah. Let's do it after this yeah. year. I'm just, so, I'm just, I find it very strange. I do, I do too. I, I don't get why he's retiring now. He's still good. His marriage is already destroyed. He's it's not goat. like he has. It's not like he has to go and repair that yeah. now. It's it, that's already destroyed. Go and play another year. You got one more in you, you Brady. Got w- at least one more. You got he, one more. He's got what? Three more fingers. You could go. Yeah. You, he, yeah. You got three more fingers. You need to cover with rings, bro. Yeah. Come on. Let's go come full. On. Let's go full uh, Mandarin and have the ten <laughs> rings here, guys. Come on. I'm just saying, I, I, we realize this was breaking news this morning in time of recording. Yeah. We're talking about this movie about Tom Brady retiring, and I just I find it suspicious. Yeah. I find I, it a little sus, bro. It's a little, it's a little. Uh... Anyways, that's my theory. Take it or leave it. <laughs> uh, also coming out this weekend, Knock at the Cabin. This is also coming to theaters. M Night Shyamalan movie. He's, he's back. He's back, baby. Um, he's been kind of in a slow. Rebound, now, slow comeback. Is this going to tie into his other ones? Because didn't the last two films he make kind of have that tie in? I don't point? think old tied into anything. Um, split and un uh, unbreakable. Yeah, tied into the first unbreakable. Yeah, but I, I'm pretty sure old tied into something because it was like the same company. Did it as yeah? Oh, maybe it did. Honestly, I kind of stopped paying attention after I saw the little kid that got pregnant, and yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it weird. got weird. Yeah, it, it got really, weird. really it was weird. A weird. Movie. It should have well, been. Called, it should have been. It should have been called old. It should have been called weird. Yeah, I, I do. I think this looks really good, though. I think Dave Bautista looks awesome in this. Um, I especially after just recently watched Glass Onion, and I thought he did great in there. Um, so this will be good. I'm uh, I'm hoping that it does well. I saw this discussion on Twitter a little while ago. Best WWE superstar turned actor. Are we slowly? I think we're slowly. It's a landslide. Dave Batista at this point. You think so? Over the Rock. He Dave Batista is a better actor. The Rock may have been in Ooh, more projects, okay. but Dave P- Batista is a better All actor. Right. What about John Cena? Well, he's fine. He's he's good, but I would say Dave Batista and he's The Rock fine. are better. That's a good. We should, I think it's a landslide, Batista. I think so. I thought it was Batista years ago when I saw him in that one scene in Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Dwayne Johnson would not have done that you scene know because now, he loses in that scene. Now and that now you, Rock's ego is like, oh, I can't lose in any of my fights. You scenes. know what? Now that you go that route, I agree with you. I he's, hands he's down great Dave in Batista. that one scene in twenty forty nine. He's great in Glass Onion. He's, I mean. Drax is a silly character, but he does pretty good with it. Yeah, and I'm not a huge like I like Drax, but I'm not a huge fan of him. But now going back to Blade Runner, that was phenomenal. That's I, a scene stealing like he yeah. steals he steals that scene. He's in that movie for five minutes, and yeah. that's the only scene I like remember from yep. that. I would say Dave Batista, top dog now. Yeah, yeah, I 100%. think he's the best WWE superstar turned actor, personally. 100 And I think this movie especially is gonna prove it. Yep. But yeah, this is also based off a book. So, I think this is smart of M. Night. Before, he was writing his own scripts, and it worked at first, and then it got a little crazy. I think he's basing off other people's work, so now when it does get a little weird, he can be like, oh, it's not... It's not me. This is orig- original yeah. IP. I'm, yeah. just, I'm just doing my interpretation of it yep. or whatever. But this is another case of that. Uh, basically, Dave Batista leads this cult... I'm going to call it, yeah. best word I can describe it, cults. cults group, yeah. 
And uh, they track down this family who is uh, vacationing in their cabin, and they can they tell them one of them has to sacrifice one of their family members to stop the apocalypse. They claim this has been a tradition for years and years and years, yep. has been constantly stopping the apocalypse. The twist isn't so much how do you decide what to do. The twist is, is what they're saying actually happening? Because yep. remember, they're in a remote cabin. Yep. And they s- are trying to convince them. They're like showing news footage or like playing whatever. It's like, but it, it kind of implies are they trying to trick them into this? Like, because if it's the apocalypse, you kind of got to sacrifice one of your needs yeah. of the many outweighs the needs yep. of the few, is what I'm saying here. Yep. But the twist is more is it actually happening? Yep. Or is they are they just tricking them? Yep. Who knows? So, yeah, it'll be good. I I've been I've been seeing trailers for this for so long. I'm just ready to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. But that's going to do it for us here on this episode of Popcorn Bucket List. Like I said, a lot to cover. So jumbo long episode, episode here. Yeah. Jumbo. Uh, yeah. We basically we bought the large popcorn. <laughs> we got the large popcorn, the large drink and yeah. the Reese's, baby. Yeah. Let's yeah. go. Uh if you have any of your own movie recommendations as per usual, let us know in the comments down below of the YouTube video. And once again, be sure to check out the Marshall Lyon County Library for access to some of our recommends, the ones we talked about and the ones we didn't talk about. Uh, For myself and Ryan Meyerberg, we'd like to thank you so much for watching, and we will see you at the movies.